from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. The Library of Congress Junior Fellows Summer Intern Program offers undergraduate and graduate students the opportunity to work on projects with curators and specialists at the world's largest and most comprehensive repository of human knowledge. Through the Junior Fellows Program, the Library of Congress furthers its mission to increase access and awareness of its collections. Junior Fellows are exposed to a broad array of library work, including preservation, reference, copyright standards, digital initiatives, cataloging, and collections processing. This summer I'm working with the Pulp Magazine Collection in the Serials and Government Publications Division. Pulps were really popular mostly between the two world wars, um, so most of the collection here at the library is from the 1920s, 1930s. One of the coolest things that I've worked with are the science fiction collection. There's lots of cool cover art, and this internship has really given me a lot of hands-on experience. Um, I've gotten my first experience with cataloging and um, collection management here, and just really once-in-a-lifetime chance to work with some really cool objects. In the future, I hope to work in a museum or another cultural institution here in D.C., hopefully working with something as fun as the pulp magazines. As a junior fellow in copyright, we are sifting through old historical documents of copyright registration dating from 1900 until 1910. We have also looked at patent law registration that has been transferred to our office that dates around about 19. 20 to about 1930. Well, the Copyright Office performs a number of functions. Primarily it is to provide information to the public about copyright law and policy, but also uh, they handle the registration process of all copyright deposits. Uh, these provide a record of American progress and creativity. They also protect uh, the author's livelihood and it allows them to keep producing and to be protected under law and thus ensuring the future of creative works. And also, the Copyright Office directly benefits the Library of Congress's collection by uh, mandating that each author provide a copy of their work. This is a portrait of President Theodore Roosevelt. Um, it was painted by Irving R. Wiles, and this was the fourth portrait that President Roosevelt ever sat for. These are three paintings painted by Charles Marion Russell, he was a very famous uh, painter at the time period. He painted portraits of the Old West. I'm working in the Law Division. My project is in the Global Gazettes Initiative, the legal publications, public notices of updates to the law. And the United Nations was collecting them from tons of different countries. And just a few years ago, they decided to turn over their collections and donate them to the Law Library of Congress. And so what I'm doing is processing these donated gazettes and referencing them with our existing collections. And where I can, I'll take the donated materials and fill in the gaps to add to our collections. The great thing about this job is that I never know what's going to come across my desk next. Um, I've seen Germany's infamous Nuremberg laws. I've seen the Supreme Court decision in Israel regarding the separation wall. I've seen environmental legislation from Papua New Guinea and Seychelles, just anything. My Junior Fellows project is the Mayan Poison Flask collection. It's part of the J.I. Kislak collection, as this is the largest collection of Mayan Poison Flask in the world. Uh, the time range for the items is between 600 and 900 AD. It's called the late classic Mayan period. One fun aspect of my project was I was able to do some testing in the preservation lab. Um, we're one of six institutions that has a hyperspectral imaging machine. And on this particular flask, we were able to find major breakage points that had been sealed up with adhesive that we hadn't previously been able to see with the naked eye. I'm working on letters from Afghanistan in the African and Middle Eastern Division. Um, letters from Afghanistan is a collection of thousands of letters from Radio Azadi, which is the Afghan branch of Radio Free Europe. These letters are um, just from regular civilians. Uh, they talk about a wide range of topics, uh, ranging from things as serious as uh, terrorism or corruption, uh, war, uh, infrastructure problems, and uh, some things as, as um, mundane or tedious as song requests or dedications. We receive um, large bags and boxes that contain thousands of uh, pieces of paper, individual letters in them, 
I have decided to create a database where these uh, letters could be sorted. So I'm actually scanning the letters and uh, that allows for them to be looked at in a more robust way. So by digitizing these letters, we're actually preserving them and capturing a snapshot of what life is like in Afghanistan now. I'm working with the Persian manuscripts and rare books, uh, helping to organize and eventually create a hand list uh, for all of the um, rare books, lithographs, and manuscripts. And so we have everything from extremely rare manuscript printed in the 14th century to very nice coffee table books done with a modern printing press today in the United States. Whether they're done as a manuscript, whether they're done as a lithograph, or whether they're done with a modern printing press, uh, there's something about certain works that seems to speak to people across time. We're able to access the same works that people were accessing 500 years ago. And what's really great is to, to open up a book and not know what it is, and then to realize uh, it's a manuscript of Rumi's Masnavi from the 16th century or from the 15th century, to realize that you're holding something that old in your hands um, and that important to the history of um, Persian literature and Persian culture. Aside from their assigned projects, junior fellows also have a calendar of educational enrichment activities throughout the 10-week program. Some of these included a tour of the U.S. Capitol building, meeting with the Librarian of Congress, lectures from various library division heads, and tours of outside institutions such as the Folgers Shakespeare Library. We've been able to go to all of these different presentations from all of these different areas, getting to see the depth of the library. And you kind of get to see how everybody plays their little role to make this library so successful. And that's been really, really cool to see. The Junior Fellows Program concludes with Display Day, an opportunity for interns to showcase their discoveries or accomplishments and answer questions from library staff the general public, and special guests, including members of Congress. The Library of Congress Junior Fellows Program is so much more than an internship. It's about discovering the unexpected, making career connections, and building lasting friendships. With, with my research background and, and being reinforced with this project, I mean, it just bettered my skills so I can, I can, get a, I can have a better opportunity in getting, getting into my, my graduate school. I am still an undergrad, I have three years left, but I'm going to be able to use the skills I learned researching and networking and professionalism for the rest of my life and continued on with my education. Working as a junior fellow, it's been a great introduction for me to DC. It's been a great stepping stone for me. I just graduated from undergrad. This is an awesome 10 week program acclimating me to the city, professional life. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.